Welcome to day 19. This is a 40-day encounter with God. An encounter that is creating more intimacy, more knowledge, and more revelation as we seek Him every single day through these studies and we find Him. Let us pray. My Lord God, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you for Jesus and thank you for the Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit of God, as I seek your help to be able to relay the message of day 19 to your people. And I thank you for every day that we've gone through. From one to 18, you have shown up and you have revealed and you have spoken to our hearts and we are getting closer to Jesus by the intimacy of the knowledge of who he is. I am so happy that I feel joy for so long. Joy was a feeling that eluded me. For in your presence, I find joy. And I am enough, and I am worthy, and I am beautiful, and I am that peculiar person, a holy nation, transferred from the kingdom of darkness to your son's light that person that has been covered with robes of righteousness, that one day came to the kingdom of God with filthy rags. But today I can say that I walk the path of Jesus dressed in white linen, filling my lamp with oil every single day and getting ready to meet my maker. I thank you that you lead me and you guide me and you stretch me and every day I am a little bit better. I have tasted and seen the sweetness of loves, the glory of your goodness, as I become more aware of your presence and less aware of me. I love to bring you praise as I bring myself. And Matthew 3, 16 says, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up of the water at that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and aligning with him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. The glorious words that we have lived to hear from our Lord and Savior one day be declared from his mouth. I am pleased with you, my daughter. I am pleased with you, my son. You have done well. You have put to good use the talents and the abilities, the time, the resources that I have given you on earth. And this is what we hope for. And this is what we strive for, that we become better by reading the Word of God, which is the love letter of God to, towards His children, that we get to know Him better, love Him better, serve Him better, and not be stagnant in old patterns of religion old patterns of rituals and old patterns of belief, but to get to know this God for ourselves, not the God that was spoken about by our parents or the gods that they believed in, 
but get to know God, get to know his son, and get to know his spirit for ourselves. So we may have a personal encounter with this God. Because in reality, our salvation is a personal encounter. We're not taking anybody with us on our journey to heaven. This is a one-way flight. Once we leave, we are not coming back. And in this journey that we are here on this earth, we are just learning, we are humbling, we are learning about mercy, we are learning about the fruits of the Spirit, which in essence, it is Jesus. And we are learning lots of things on this journey here on earth as we are preparing every single day for our journey to heaven. I thank you for an open heaven over us today. Jesus, you made sure that there was no dividing wall, that there was no more veil, that there was no more division, no more obstacles between us and God. And you came to be the advocate, to be the intermediary, An unholy humanity to be able to stand in front of a holy God only through Jesus. And we want to know you more, Jesus, and love you more and praise you more. We want to be first rather than doing first. We want to be more and become better for you, not for us, but for you. Become rather than doing becoming us, becoming the people that Jesus died for us to be. A forgiving people, a loving people, a generous people, a merciful and compassionate people. Not like the Pharisees that were so rigid in their beliefs and they only knew about God in their heads and what they had learned, but they had no knowledge of God in their hearts. My Lord, we receive you and we say, and we declare, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Let your spirit descend upon me today and upon each and every one of us listening to this message. Heaven being poured out on us, sweet Holy Spirit and the Holy Trinity, come rest on us today. All things have passed away and new things are here to stay. Amen. Welcome once again to day 19. The name of our study today is the Scarlet Cord, armed with a promise of God from prostitution to faith. Our Bible verse is Joshua 2.11. When we heard of it, our hearts melted and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God 
is God in heaven above and on the earth below. Moses had died. Joshua's time to enter the promised land had finally come. An entire unbelieving generation, including the 10 negative spies who first reported victory as impossible years earlier, had passed from the scene. As one of the two believing spies, Joshua had made a positive report to Moses, armed with the promise of God. In a godly mentor's lessons, Joshua then sent in only two spies to help them visualize their action plan to conquer the land. Go look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. This is found in Joshua 2.1. The spies took refuge at the house of a prostitute named Rahab. Rahab became a central strategic figure of incomparable courage as she helped Israel to enter the Promised Land and subdue her own people. Whenever the army of Israel entered Canaan, Rahab acted according to a prearranged plan and hung out a scarlet cord from the window of her establishment. Thus, she and her family were saved. How interesting that a scarlet cord, like an emblem of ill repute, became a sign of salvation. How very beautiful to think that it is a scarlet cord of the covenant of God's grace that binds all of the Word of God together. The blood of Jesus, red as scarlet. And in Christ Jesus, the blood-stained crimson cross of shame became the gleaming symbol of salvation. Rahab's faith in God engrafted her into a new family, even more. Rahab was soon engrafted into the physical family of Israel as she became the wife of Solomon, one of the leaders of Israel, who supported Moses when they left Egypt. And Rahab's name is mentioned in the Hall of Fame of Hebrews 11. This woman, a prostitute, became a woman of faith. Weary eyes were always watching, however, and the king of Jericho got wind of the spy's visit. He sent a message to Rahab to surrender the men. But Rahab had already conceived a plan. She hid the men, then told a lie to cover up their presence. What caused Rahab to risk her life for two strangers? Why didn't the fear of the king's wrath motivate her to expose the men for who they were? Where did she find such courage? God's reputation had preceded Joshua's visit. Jericho's inhabitants had heard of the Israelites' unbelievable exodus through the Red Sea. Then word spread of how they had already begun defeating their new enemies. People recognized this was no ordinary feat and certainly not one their gods could perform. We were not told how. Many really heard of this miraculous God and believed. But Rahab did. The fear of Joshua's God had struck a chord in Rahab's heart and her simple faith in the God in heaven above and on the earth below superseded all the other gods she may have previously embraced. She recognized that belief in this God could save her and her family from death, both from the king and from this superior God, when Joshua's men moved in to destroy the city of Jericho. Rahab's valiant actions so stirred God's heart that she earned a place in the roll call of Hebrews of heroes in the book of Hebrews, Hall of Faith, Hebrews 11. From that point on, Rahab was known as a woman of faith and was spared the destruction of those around her when the walls of Jericho fell.
God could have chosen a ho-hum method for the Israelites' people to cross to their promised land. All the time, those Israelites might have thought that miraculous Red Sea crossing was for their benefit alone. But that was not so. God had a bigger picture in mind. He always does. The two spies told Rahab to gather her family members together in the house, inside the house, and tie a scarlet cord in the window in order to guarantee her rescue when Joshua's army entered the city. The two men agreed to spare her life under those conditions. She had to be inside the house in order for them to spare her and her family. Then they headed out to the hills where they hid for three days. Their words to Joshua upon their return from spying the land. The Lord has surely given the whole land into our hands. All the people are melting in fear because of us. Joshua 2.24 The scarlet cord, a foreshadowing of events to come generations later, points to the ultimate bigger picture for all time. The God in heaven above and on the earth below devised his plan of action long before the foundation of the world. And there, at Rahab's window, was the invitation that would continue to be heard around the world for all time. Jesus, the scarlet thread of Christianity, is woven throughout the Bible and documented in history. The scarlet thread led to Bethlehem and Calvary where God's big picture was completed. Jesus, Scarlet's blood would provide the window and guarantee of escape from every person's spiritual death. You may think supernatural happenings around you are simply coincidences or that they occur because of you or someone else's genius. And if you do recognize a miracle for what it truly is, you might think God actually did it just for you. And he did, because that's the kind of God he is. But be careful that you don't miss the bigger picture as well. Whether God reveals himself today in the miraculous or in the ordinary is not the issue. That he reveals himself at all is so that all generations, yours included, will know his reputation and his character so that the holy, reverent, awesome, powerful, fearful name of God will empower the gods we humans, overpower the gods we humans often embrace so that he will draw us to himself. God wants all people, even the Rahabs of the world, to know that he is the one true God the God in heaven above and on the earth below, and the only one who can meet our deepest needs. The fear of the Lord is the beginning place for enjoying his wisdom and a starting place to know and enjoy him personally. And the personal truth for this study is a miracle is always a God incident. And a personal question for us today based on this study, have you experienced any God incidents lately? Have you seen anything out of the ordinary that has happened and you can finally say, this was God, this was no coincidence, this is a god incidence. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, my God, as we have arrived to day 19. What beauty there is in your word. What beauty there is in you, Father God. Through your Son, Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit. As we get to know you more, we just fall in love with you more. And deeper, go into you, my Father. And as we ask ourselves these deeper questions, my Father, we can also be in tuned and aligned with your word and see where the disalignment is happening in our lives, my Father. Help us, Lord God, to be aligned to you in every sense of the word. 
God, help us to see everything that happens in light of eternity. When our world is too small, help us to grab and to grasp the big picture. Thank you that you are a personal God who loves to meet our needs as well. Father God, thank you so much for each person listening to this audio. Thank you for each one of my subscribers. Thank you, Lord God. We give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. I thank you for blessing them in a mighty way, my Father. Blessing them wherever they may be in their walk and in their journey with you, my Father. Bless them and reveal to them and impart knowledge and understanding so they may go from glory to glory, my God. Spiritual promotion, my Father. That is what we seek. As we become more and more mature in you, we give you all the praise. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen.